Hi SMR, I'm so excited to be part of the cooking channel. Bought some of Miss Benden's soup and scones, so delicious. I managed to taste one of her scones. Mm -mm -mm, I could eat that all day. So I personally couldn't decide what to make for you. I love baking, it's my go-to. I like making cakes, I love making scones, obviously with my Cornish roots. Um, but I thought, let's make something savoury. So I often look at the BBC Good Food website online for ideas for recipes for dinner. So I picked one of my favourite recipes from BBC Good Foods and it's a roasted vegetable lasagna. So I hope you decide to join in with me. If you do, go grab a penny, pop your hair up and let's get cooking. Today I'm going to be making with you the BBC Good Foods Roasted Vegetable Lasagna. In this recipe you'll learn how to make a tomato sauce and a white sauce which are very handy for lots of different bakes. So let's get our ingredients. Three red peppers cut into chunks. Now get an adult to help you if you're not sure about cutting peppers but I'll show you the way I do it. So using a sharp knife I cut around the middle Okay, taking the sides off and it leaves the core in the centre, like so. Okay, discard my waste and then using these final bits, it says large chunks, so I'm just going to give them a rough chop like this. And then once you've cut them, to help you with your kitchen organisation, it can be handy to have a little bowl for you to put your things in. Okay. Set your oven to 180 fan so it can get warming up there. Now, you may be thinking that this looks like a few more than three peppers. And I'll tell you now, oh dear, it is. I've decided to make a double batch because I want to make a lasagna for my mum. We also need an aubergine. But if I'm doubling the recipe because I want to make an extra lasagna, how many aubergines am I going to need? That's right, two aubergines. Cut into half centimetre thick slices. So to cut the aubergine you need to take off the top and take off the bottom and then what I like to do is make a bridge with my fingers, cut it down the middle because then instead of trying to cut an aubergine that's rolling all over the place I've got a flat base to start doing my half centimetre rounds. As my pepper bowl is overflowing, I thought I'd read step one to see what I need to do first. Now, I've heated my oven to, to, to 180 fan, and then it says, lightly oil two large baking trays and add the peppers and aubergines, toss with olive oil, season well, then roast for 25 minutes until lightly browned. So, I'm just gonna put these directly into the pan. I've got my baking sheet, I'm going to put a bit of oil on that, oh my goodness, I realize how hard it is to make a cooking show, and then I'm just going to put one of my aubergines on here, which looks like it's going to take up the whole pan, maybe I won't do that second aubergine. And then I'm going to put my peppers on the other one. So I've decided a recipe's there for a reason. So I will do my second aubergine. I just wanted to give you a little tip about cutting. So it's good to make a little uh, safety point with your fingers so that when you're chopping, if you slid the knife, it would go on your nails and not cut any flat fingers. So always cut with your fingers like this. Now 
Now I've got my two trays of uh, mountains of veg and it says toss with the olive oil and season well and to season is talking about your salt and your pepper. So I'm going to put a few twists of pepper on each and a sprinkling of my salt on each and then I'm going to use my hands to mix the olive oil and the pepper and the salt around with the vegetables until they're shiny and glossy and I can see that they've all been coated all over. Now I've chosen peppers and aubergines but feel free to use whatever veg you have to hand. Some people like courgette, some people um, don't like the aubergines and put mushroom in, some people put spinach in, you choose what you like. And if you want to have a meat lasagna, you can always add minced beef as well, which you'd fry off first before putting in to your layers. Now it's time to pop these in the oven. Oh goodness, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed. As if by magic, they are in the oven and I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes. Ooh, it's a bit overzealous there. Now, while the vegetables are roasting, this is our chance to make our homemade tomato sauce and our homemade white sauce. You can buy these from the shop, but I'd like to show you how to make them in case you want to try that yourself at home. For the homemade tomato sauce, you will need two finely chopped onions. Now, onions are tricky devils and they do like to make us cry. So what I do is I go to the opposite end of the hairy end, take that top off like so, then peel the onion until you get down to the white layers. Does help if you've got a bit of a nail, but if you don't, you can always use the edge of your knife to peel that off. And then leaving that tail on, because some say that it's that bit, that end that makes you cry, and I like to follow anything that's going to stop me from crying. Make my bridge again, cut the onion carefully down the middle so I can have a flat surface to work on. It says finely chopped, so for this I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to cut into the layers to make what looks a bit like a fan. I'll show you. See those? And then I will cut this way now and what you'll find is it magically dices your onion into finely chopped cubes and then I discard that end bit and do the other one. So I've just cut an onion number three and I'm really starting to cry a bit now. If you want to find out why onions make you cry, have a look at the attached information underneath the recipe on the drive. Um, and if anyone has any tips to stop yourself from crying when you're cutting onions, please, please let me know. So I've cut my four onions. I'm, I did four because of my double batch and now it's asked for two sliced cloves of garlic. This is a garlic bulb. In order to get to the clothes, you need to unwrap some of these papery layers on the outside until you get inside and you can see, excuse me onions, that you've got some clothes inside. 
Now, I'm doing a double batch. So if the recipe asks for two, how many cloves do I need? That's right. I need four cloves of sliced garlic. The easiest way I find to peel garlic is to get the knife and use the flat side and just push it down with your finger, with your palm of your hand. Slice the tail almost off and then you can use that to very easily peel the rest of the garlic. Then it's asked for fine slices. So again, using our technique with our nails, just going to very carefully, finely slice my cloves. I like my garlic a bit more finely sliced, so I'm using my knife like a rocking horse to cut down over my garlic to make it a bit finer. And I need one chopped carrot. So first I'm just gonna use my peeler to take the edge off. Alternatively, you can just wash it under the tap and give it a bit of a scrub. I do this out of habit. And get your knife, take the tail off, take the head off. And then again, I'm gonna cut mine down the middle. So then I can cut on a flat surface like so. And then carefully cut my carrot into its rough chop. The timer just went off, so I just got the hot roasted veg out of the oven, leaving it on the side while I make my sauce. So I'm now going to put my pan onto a medium high heat with some oil to heat up. And then I'm going to add my onions. and let them cook for a bit and soften before I add my garlic and my carrot. You can hear the onions really sizzling away nicely now. And so I'm gonna add in my carrots and my garlic. And I'm gonna cook that for a few more minutes until everything has softened. Now I'm happy with that, it's looking nice and soft. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of tomato puree. I'm gonna do four because obviously I'm making it for my mum as well. You can see it's gone a real red colour now because of that tomato puree. Now I'm going to add in my tomatoes. I only had plum tomatoes because it's my preferred, but that's fine. You can just use your spatula to smush the tomatoes down. like so. As an optional extra, you can add a handful of basil leaves, but these are optional. Following this, you bring your tomato sauce to a boil, so I'm just going to take out some basil leaves to put in them and then simmer for 20 minutes. It took a bit of time because you, I had such a large quantity because of my double quantity 
you can see that's now coming to a boil. So now we're going to reduce it to a simmer, so that means turn the heat down a bit and let it simmer away for 20 minutes. That means you should see less rap rapid bubbles. So I'm going to turn the heat down, give it a quick stir, and then I'm going to pop a lid on it and let it simmer for 20 minutes while we make our white sauce. To make a white sauce, all you need is butter, flour, and milk. This recipe asks for 85 grams of butter, 85 grams of flour, and 750 mils of milk. I've doubled that for my two lasagnas. First, you pop the heat on, not off, which I've just done. And we pop in our butter. And we're gonna melt this. And to make a white sauce, it is really important to use a wooden spoon because it's more rigid than a plastic one and metal ones could scrape the bottom of a pan. As you can see, the butter's almost melted. We've just got this little cheeky bit here that needs to melt away. And then, once that's gone, we add in our flour. Okay. So pour that in. And mix that all up. You can see that it, the mix stiffens with the flour and you keep stirring it until no lumps remain and you can't see any more floury bits. And then what we do is we cook this for a couple of minutes and that will cook off any floury taste. So I've been cooking for a couple of minutes there, you can hear it sizzling a bit, so I know that's cooking the flour out. I can see my tomato sauce simmering away over here. So now it's time to add the milk. So at this point we start adding our milk, and you do so just a little bit at a time, and you can see that as soon as the roux starts taking, and absorbing that milk, it's time to add a little bit more. Don't worry if it goes lumpy, keep stirring and it will stir the lumps out. And that's why we have our wooden spoon, because it's nice and stiff. So it will gradually loosen up as you add more milk, because at the minute you can still see it's very stiff, but you go gradually to allow the mixture to absorb the milk. And if it starts going lumpy, like I said, just stir it out. It starts to form more of a um, paste rather than a solid block, the more milk you add. Just keep stirring. Now that I've added all my milk, you can see how much looser it has become. Okay, and so we just want to turn that down the heat a bit now and cook until the sauce starts to thicken and it coats the back of the wooden spoon. So at the minute you can see, still quite loose. So we're just gonna cook this out a little bit more until we feel that it's started to thicken. Whilst I'm stirring this luxurious sauce, it was a bit Nigella there, wasn't it? Um, I was just thinking about all the different ways you could use it. So this is a white sauce. If you added cheddar to it, you could make it into a cheese sauce and use it to make cauliflower cheese, or use it to make macaroni cheese, or just cheesy pasta. You can use it for so many things. So if you see that a recipe asks for a white sauce, then now you know what it is. And what I'm gonna do is I like mine a little fierier, so I'm gonna put a little bit of my mustard in and a bit of black pepper for my uh, white sauce here. Now my sauce is really, I can feel it's much thicker than it was earlier and you can see now 
that it coats the back of a spoon. So I believe we are ready. So we've now got our elements ready for layering. Um, I decided to add some roasted courgette into the veg as well because it's one of my favourites. And then we've got our tomato sauce and our white sauce. So now all we need to do is get the lasagna sheets and get building. So to start with, we're going to do a layer of the roasted vegetables. So you just spread them out onto your plate. On top of that, you do a layer of the tomato sauce. Now I'm moving the tomato, uh, sorry, the dish closer to the sauce so I don't spill it all over the sides. And so then you go for a layer of that tomato sauce, covering up all the veg there. Ooh, it's quite steamy. Now the recipe says to blitz it, but it's that's optional. You can choose what you want. I can never be bothered. So once we've got our layer of tomato sauce, we then do our layer of lasagna. Now I've just got these lasagna sheets here. Okay, they're just dried. It says fresh, but uh, fresh is more expensive and I don't know, I never buy fresh. And if you get bits that don't fit, don't overlap them because they won't cook. Just break your sheet into the right size so that it fits really nicely in your dish. Then after you've done your layer of lasagna sheets like so, don't worry if they go into shards, it's just lasagna, you're going to cut it with a knife anyway. You get your white sauce Sorry, I'm just doing a bit of rearranging so I can get my white sauce over. And you can ladle that, I suggest using a ladle, onto your lasagna sheets and smoothing it out so it spreads evenly across. Next, we repeat with another layer of veg, then another layer of tomatoes then another layer of lasagna and another layer of um, white sauce and do that twice more and then we'll meet again. Now I've got to my third and final layer. I've just put my sauce on which I'm going to make sure I spread out evenly over the whole lasagna top and then following this the recipe suggests putting on some mozzarella, which you can buy grated or as a ball and rip up yourself, and then cherry tomatoes. And I don't particularly like cherry tomatoes, so I'm gonna miss them out. You just make sure that that white sauce is covering all of the lasagna sheets, like so. Don't forget that little chappy in the corner and then I grab my mozzarella ball because I, I like it like this and then I can just tear bits off and pop artistically on the top making sure there's good coverage and that no one's going to get upset if they don't get a bit of mozzarella. Then once this is done all we have left to do is bake it in the oven and we put it in for 45 minutes in an oven of 160 so it's a bit lower than we did our vegetables and after 45 minutes you should see that it's all bubbling and golden and then we so there's my mozzarella there and now off to the oven. Ooh, that looks quite nice underneath as well. Dum da da dum! Here are the lasagnas. I filled them up a bit high, especially this one here, so we had a bit of leakage. But they've bubbled up and they've turned golden brown on the top. So now I'm just going to leave them to one side to let them cool a bit before we dig in. So here we are, half an hour later, allowing all of the juices of the lasagna to settle 
and I've been portioning up one for my mum. Here are the portions and here's one for me to taste. So let's dive in, shall we? All those lovely layers there. I love lasagna. Oh, cat's come to help. Get a bit of everything. Mmm. Creamy. Tomatoey. Delicious. I hope you all have a go.